Go ahead. And, uh, so we're looking at the P39 Paracobra, the one on display here at the National Museum of the United States Air Force is a P39Q, but it is done up like an earlier model. Their sign says a P39D was the look they were going for in an Aleutian Islands uh, air base. Uh, these airplanes were used widely through the Pacific, especially in the early part of World War II. There are some unique features about the airplane um, that make it different than just the average run-of-the-mill uh, airplane out there, so I wanted to point some of those out for Chris's channel. Um, we begin with the engine and the uh, main armament. The engine on this aircraft actually sits behind the pilot. Very unusual. Only a couple other airplanes that would have used that. Every other airplane that you're going to see, single engine airplane, the engine is in front of the pilot. So if you look at the airplane, you can see the air scoop behind the uh, cockpit. You see the uh, six exhaust uh, vents there on the side of the airplane that tells you where the engine is and over here they have a nice demonstration of an earlier model of the engine which uh, has 12 cylinders it's a um, Allison V171085 that they have on display here they actually have 12 exhaust two for each cylinder on this model of the engine, but there were several variants of it and they were used in several different airplanes. But you can see that it has a very long shaft that comes underneath a 37 millimeter cannon, which made it some of the heaviest armament fielded by U.S. fighter airplanes in World War II. Uh, you can see the shells in the uh, loading cradle, uh, the linkage underneath all the plastic to keep people from uh, sticking their fingers on everything, and the red markings on the uh, barrel are uh, showing you where the cutaways were done. So you can see what the inside of that 37 millimeter cannon looked like, but see the gold propeller shaft come underneath to the reduction gear in the um, gray housing here at the front. That turned the uh, propeller, but you can see that the cannon fires through the center of the propeller hub. And that's how you get a big cannon shooting through the center of a propeller hub when normally the engine would be sitting in front of the pilot. You put the engine behind the pilot. P-39 had car door style entry in and out of the cockpit, unusual for U.S. Uh, and even other nations. Um, most of them would have had a sliding canopy or something of that nature. The um, British Typhoon had car door style entries. Very tall uh, nose wheel because you have very long propeller blades. You don't want those hitting the ground. The plane sits on Marston mat, a type of steel decking that was used uh, to hastily construct airfields. In this case, uh, the diorama is supposed to depict the Aleutian Islands. They used a lot of Marston mat there. Uh, the armaments also, if you look above the propeller hub, there are 250 caliber machine guns firing through the propeller arc on a timing chain, one on each side of the center line, giving you 250 caliber and a 37 millimeter. You'd think something so heavily armed would have been more widely used, but that great engine did not have a turbocharger or supercharger. And so how they used them was uh, to take airplanes like the P-38 that did and therefore could operate effectively at higher altitudes, tangle into a Japanese fighter element, and as the dogfight spiraled down to lower altitudes, P-39s, such as this, or the P-40 aircraft that I'm sure Chris has already shown you, uh, would then jump into the fight, adding um, superior numbers, 
and bring um, their expertise to bear at a lower altitude where they excelled. The um, company who made the Air Cobra Bell in Buffalo, New York, uh, shipped a lot of these to other countries, notably Russia, for the Lend-Lease program. They make great ground attack airplanes. They were shared with some other countries as well. Bell also made an up-engined version of the P-39 called P-63. Uh, and that airplane had a supercharger. I believe at one time, the museum here had a P-63 in the so-called pinball markings, which was uh, where uh, pilots flew other airplanes for training, and they loaded their guns with what were called frangible bullets, powdered lead that would uh, basically shatter very easily on impact, and they shot at that airplane, and every time they hit that airplane, a light in that section of the airplane would go off uh, indicating to the pilot doing the shooting, yeah, you scored a hit. Uh, and, and so it looked like a pinball machine. That's where it got its name. Um, a lot of fun. Don't know how much I would have wanted to be the pilot with other people shooting at me, frangible bullets or not. Notice the uh, insignia is the blue with the white star. Chris is going to have to pivot around a little bit. Uh, we just left a series of airplanes that had that with a red circle in the middle. The red circle looked too much like the Japanese insignia, and so it was the lead in early on. Um, fighting in the Aleutians, of course, you're leading up to about the midway, uh, Battle of Midway uh, time period in the Second World War. After this, the P-39s are going to drop steadily from frontline use. And that's all I got on the 39th.